watching a video series by Technology Networks called Teach Me in 10. And the idea behind it is that we speak with experts and they teach you a given subject all in less than 10 minutes, making for brilliant bite-sized episodes. And the episode you're here for today is a brilliant one all about working with Corning Matrigel Matrix. And our guest, Hilary Sherman, a senior scientist of cell biology at Corning Life Sciences, gives you her tips, tricks, and expert advice. It's a fantastic episode and one that's kindly sponsored by Corning. And they strive to improve efficiencies and develop innovations that enable scientists to create breakthrough discoveries in areas like like cancer research, drug discovery, and advanced therapies. And you can learn more about their 3D solutions, including tools for organoid, spheroid, and tissue models in the links that we've left below. But without further ado, you're about to watch this brilliant Teach Me in 10 in full. Hey, Hilary, how are you doing? Good. How about yourself, Lucy? I'm really well, thank you. So firstly, can you just start by telling us what Corning Matrigel Matrix is and what it's used for. Sure. So Corning Matrigel Matrix is a basement membrane extract that's made up of a wide variety of extracellular matrix proteins, so ECM proteins, um, such as collagen, laminin, a whole bunch of other proteins, as well as growth factors. And this can not only provide a scaffold for cells, but it also gives biological cues to the cells to kind of help them to act a little bit more in vivo-like. Mm -hmm. And historically, this has been used a lot for a uh, feeder-free human embryonic stem cell culture in order to maintain the human embryonic stem cells in their undifferentiated state. Um, but recently, there's been a lot of interest in using Corning Nature Gel Matrix for three-dimensional cell culture, as well as organoid culture. And then I noticed that there are actually quite a lot of different varieties of the matrix gel matrix available. Yeah. Could you explain them a little bit to our audience? Sure. So I already sort of alluded to that Corning matrix gel matrix can be used in a wide variety of applications. And so all of these applications, the cells have different needs. And so by slightly modifying the Corning matrix gel matrix, we can provide the right product for the right application. So, for example, with human embryonic stem cells, where you want to maintain their undifferentiated state during culture, we really want to make sure each lot of that matrix gel matrix can accomplish that. So we actually do internal testing to make sure that every lot is going to be perfect for that application. And then we sell other varieties, such as uh, matrix gel for organoid culture. And with that application, you're looking to maintain more complex three-dimensional structures like organoids. And so we really want to ensure that the matrix gel product is well adapted to that. So again, we're testing that product to make sure it's the right stiffness that organoids like, that it's in a narrower protein concentration range that's better suited for organoids, and that it can maintain um, the dome structure that these organoids are typically maintained in. So different products for different applications in order to get customers what's going to give them the best result. Perfect. And so it seems like a lot of applications actually involve mixing cells with the matrix gel matrix and then to plant plating. Are there any other ways to work with the matrix gel matrix? Yeah, yeah. There's sort of um, what I would consider three main ways to work with the matrix gel in your cells. And it, it really comes down to what's the application? What, what is the customer trying to accomplish? Um, but as you mentioned, the embedded is, is probably one of the main ways customers do this. So they're taking their cells and actually mixing it with the matrix gel matrix and simply dispensing it into the microplate or cell culture plate. And so the result is three-dimensional structures that are sort of stratified all throughout the gel. And um, this can be really great if you're just trying to bulk produce three-dimensional structures, either for like a protein extraction or some kind of homogenous cell-based assay. Um, but if you can imagine, if you're trying to image each one of these 3D structures, you'd have to take a lot of images at different focal heights and some of the spheroids would be out of focus, some would be in focus. So that might not be the best way to accomplish that. So in that case, what I would do is something more like a, a sandwich protocol. So here you actually lay down your bed of matrix gel matrix, you allow it to polymerize, and then you seed your cells on top. And that way your cells are in a more narrow focal plane um, and so it's much faster to scan and image these organoids because they're all in the same place. 
And then you can come in with a more dilute concentration of nature gel to kind of sandwich on top of them. Um, and then lastly, the third technique that, that I consider is a dome culture or droplet dispense. And it's kind of the best of both worlds of the embedded and the sandwich because you're fully embedding the cells. So it's very easy. You're just kind of dispensing. But instead of filling a whole well, you're dispensing tiny droplets of your cells mixed with the matrix gel. So they're in a much more narrow focal, focal path. So for imaging and scanning, you can very easily see the three-dimensional structures. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's not a two-step process of coding. Additionally, this is often used for precious organoid samples. So say a patient-derived organoid sample where you might not have a lot of cells to work with. So you can't fill whole multiple well plates of, of your organoids. You just have tiny five or 20 microliter droplets. Lovely. And one thing I do hear is that matrix shell matrix can be a bit tricky to work with. Do you have any tips? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of the great properties of matrix gel matrix is that it's liquid when it's cold. And then after you mix your cells, you can warm it up to room temperature 37 degrees and encapsulate your cells. Uh, but those same temperature properties can make it a little bit tricky because you don't want it to polymerize and gel until you're ready for it to do so. Um, so keeping all of your tips, your reservoirs, your plates, um, your pipettes, everything nice and cold is going to make it much easier to manipulate the matrix gel and prevent premature polymerization. Perfect. And so I guess since matrix gel matrix needs to be kept cold, could dispensing be automated? Yeah, actually it can be. We've worked with quite a few commercial instruments for automating the dispensing process. And it's really just applying the same rules. You have to chill all your pipette tips, chill your reservoir. Um, peristaltic pumps can be a little trickier. So sometimes I like tip-based systems. So you have to um, don't have as much clogging or residual matrix gel sticking to things. Um, so that can all be really helpful um, for automating the dispense. Additionally, we actually just launched um, the MatriBot Bioprinter, um, which is our temperature controlled bioprinter for dispensing uh, temperature sensitive hydrogels like Corning Matrix Gel Matrix and collagen. And so that can be really helpful for getting good and accurate dispenses of this kind of viscous solution. Um, additionally, if customers don't want to automate this process, we actually sell our um, matrix gel 3D plate, which is um, microplates pre-coated with unpolymerized matrix gel. So these are 96 or 3D four wheel plates, black and white with clear bottom. And um, the product is shipped with the frozen unpolymerized matrix gel so the customer can store it. And then when they're ready, they simply thaw the plate polymerize the matrix gel and see their cell. So they don't have to handle or optimize the process at all if they really don't want to. Perfect. And so do you need to remove the matrix gel matrix to perform assays? Yeah, good question. Um, not necessarily. It, it really depends on the application. Um, you know, we've worked with a wide variety of reagents and antibodies and stains, and we've had really good success optimizing these assays with the matrix gel and the organoids right in the plate. So it's something customers will need to put a little bit of work into, but typically either increasing concentrations or increasing incubation times to allow for diffusion um, can accomplish this. But it's something customers are going to have to kind of optimize uh, on their own. Oh, that makes sense. And then finally, as we're almost out of time, I really wanted to ask you if do you want to remove. So if you wanted to remove organoids or spheroids from Matrix Matrix Gel, how would you do it? Yeah, so in some applications, it does make sense to remove the matrix gel completely before further processing. And this actually can be done very easily. Um, we offer a reagent called Corning's cell recovery solution, which when you add the solution cold to the cells embedded in the matrix gel, it depolymerizes the matrix gel and kind of loosens it up so that you can free up the three-dimensional structure. And there's no enzyme or anything involved, so you're not risking damaging your structure or damaging your cells. You're really just breaking down um, the, the matrix gel itself to free up your structure. And, and we do have a protocol available on our website if customers want more information about that. Wonderful. Well, I've really enjoyed learning from you. Thank you so much, Hilary. It's been a pleasure as always. Thanks so much, Lucy. Thanks so much for tuning in to this Teach Me in 10, and I hope we'll see you again very soon.